It's the end of the beginning of a new video game console generation. In fact, it's the second generation of gaming that I've been entirely aware of, and also the first one I've been highly anticipating. Now, me just being a guy in college, I can't afford both the Xbox One and the PS4, so I'll just be reviewing the Xbox One, seeing it as it was the console I chose due to exclusives. And I know you'll be able to find a PS4 review somewhere on here to compare this one to, so no problem there. I'm just here to take a good long gander at the Xbox One and make a few criticisms along the way. So come along with me and let's see, what's with the Xbox One? Starting with the hardware, the first thing to see is that the Xbox One is launched with a black finish instead of the predecessor's white. I respect the fact that this console, just as the PS4, blends right into your other digital machinery, but seriously, it looks like what we joke about. A VCR player. Or an old DVD player. It is important to note that the Xbox One has HDMI output for a monitor and an input for a TV or even another console. You know the phrase, don't fix what isn't broken? That's something apparently Microsoft forgot about when placing the USB ports. The Xbox One has three USB 3.0 inputs, two in the back which is least convenient, and one last port, not in the front, but on the side. What the 360 had was perfect, I cannot understand the slightest why there wouldn't be any in the front at all. Continuously, the hard drive of the Xbox One has a capacity of 500 gigs and it is non-detachable. While that size might be fine for now, it won't last long depending on how big each game is and it is an issue that should not have been overlooked. Relating to the hard drive size, the overall size of the Xbox seems a bit bulky and surprisingly heavy, which adds to the VCR effect. Overall, it appears to be sleek, smooth, and nicely flat, but it's not going to be fun charging up the controller with the charge kit that, of course, you must buy separately. That will lead us harshly to a great piece of hardware governing the new Xbox, the controller. At first glance, the controller looks a little different, but recognizable and still retains what we originally remembered about it being, sturdy and comfortable. It also looks like a hybrid of the original Xbox and the 360 controller, with a few minor improvements to boot. To elaborate, both triggers and bumpers have been enlarged and they better fit a more ergonomic design. It feels enduringly comfortable for hours of play and the smaller joysticks will take a bit of getting used to. The only issue I have with the overall design of the controller, not including that it takes batteries still and a charge pack is not included, is the D-pad. The D-pad wasn't always a favorite and sadly it's not any better. It looks quite nice and feels right, but just press a direction. When I started playing Killer Instinct, you know, a fighting game where people prefer using a D-pad rather than a joystick, I found it was just unusable and somehow, somehow, the joystick actually works well in the game. The joysticks are precise and noticeably more responsive than the earlier models. Just as a quick little note, the microphone headset has an improved jack with a noticeably better voice quality than before. Now, moving on to the next controller, the Kinect. It appears quite different than its predecessor, and it looks just like a small box from a past era of technology. I won't judge it too much by its size or shape, because when you use it with the Xbox One, it is absolutely baffling how they managed to put that piece together. This will segue us to the Xbox One software and things relating. The Kinect along with greatly improved gesture response has voice recognition that is also more responsive, and it can utilize a set of commands spoken by any person in an average speaking voice. There were moments where I was literally close to whispering commands, or even sometimes playing music in the background, and the Kinect still performed almost flawlessly. The camera is also a wonder to behold. It can detect the face from anywhere in the room and take it as an instant profile login. The actual video quality of the camera is better than the average HD webcam picture. It can go into night vision mode, and it can also display a pseudo heat vision that is based on distance. To coincide with the head tracking, a game like Battlefield 4 gives you the option to use the head tracking to act as if you're looking with your head inside of vehicles. Such a mode works best when you're the only one in the room, directly in front of the Kinect, and then it effectively works. It can also be used to navigate through the menus to each app with a simple command to go exactly where you want. Lastly, you do get the option to turn it off and then unplug it if you wish. But I ask, why would you do that with this insanely futuristic device? Moving through the Xbox One's OS is a snap, and quite literally with the snap and pin features that allow you, with extreme speed, to access all your apps and games, or display more than one at the same time. The overall layout of the dashboard is pretty much a clone of Windows 8, but I will admit, it is very quick and easy to navigate around to get where you want. 
In contrast, I have heard an amount of complaints about how ugly the main menus look. It's bland, blocky, and boring. Well, aren't you supposed to watch TV? A movie? Listen to music? Oh, 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 here's one. Play a game instead? The Xbox One OS makes it very quick and simple for people of all ages and skill sets to navigate and do anything except float around the menus. The few apps available with the Xbox One are as useful as you're used to, and they work really well with the console along with the Kinect. You can also view friends, achievements from all your past games, settings of all sorts, and so much more. But not the hard drive space. Yeah, I'm as shocked as you are. I, I can't even. How do they expect us to manage our permanent hard drive if we can't view what's left in it? This is by far the worst thing to have in any console now, and it is so inexcusable. Now you know the worst part of it. Let's get a little bit better. Installing games is great. Pop in the disc, install, and you can play a small portion of it while it's still downloading. Remember how you could install games on the 360? Well, this is how it works from now on, and it is very smooth, but not a very fast process. You'll still need the disc to run it every time, but it doesn't actually spin, and if it does, it's amazingly silent. I know what you're thinking, the disc drive clicking problem. It's in a number of them, I will admit, but no overheats, right? It just came out, guys. So, kinks are a thing. Now, before we go into the games, let's take a short moment to look at the TV feature available to the Xbox One. Via the HDMI in, you can plug a cable box into the back of your Xbox. When you first launch it, this app will run a setup allowing you to have the Xbox One turn on your TV and cable box when starting up. The features that allow the Xbox to change the volume or turn off and on your TV only support big name brands. For example, I have a Westinghouse and it didn't work, but I can still use the cable box due to the wider support of service providers. Once in, you can view the same channels as you would normally, but sometimes the channel numbers might be off, but you can deal with it. You can pin channels and get specific notifications of other sorts on the Xbox One TV app. It's a neat feature to those who watch TV, but you could also just plug another HDMI device in there. Have fun with that. Now, let's move on to the games. The Xbox One has its ups and downs, but most importantly, we need to see how it plays games. Well, it works, and the games, for one, run noticeably better than they did on the previous console. The graphics aren't a huge step forward, but the overall functionality, smoothness, and lighting are a huge improvement, and it won't take long to notice a larger graphical difference in the future. Whilst playing a game, the Xbox One has gotten rid of the small Xbox menu, and now it returns you back to the main dashboard. It's not how you'd think, either. You're allowed to do nearly as much on the dashboard after pressing the Xbox button as you could after quitting a game or starting up your console. The one thing about this rendition, however, is if you launch another game or app, you cannot resume your last game. Yet. There exists an option to fully resume the game you ended? That option is currently in beta mode, so I will not touch upon it. The other two features that are allowed during gameplay are the Snap and Game DVR. The Snap is useful, but is also a cause for a distraction. It does have its practical uses, and it works well, but I have yet to find a way to make the Snap screen bigger without stopping my game. The DVR is a feature that allows the player to say, Xbox, record that. The command that is easily and quickly registered by the Kinect then kicks the DVR in, recording your past 30 seconds of gameplay. The quality is barely an excuse for 720p, but you can send it to your SkyDrive and then upload it here. You can also send an assortment of clips to the Upload Studio to do some editing to make up to a 5 minute video. The editor only lets for a few quick edits, but it works very well. I wish you could get longer clips and videos, but it's still a great feature to mess around with. I can see this review is starting to drag. So time to wrap it up. The Xbox One has a bulky but clean design. The inputs are a bit clumsily placed, and the system weighs a surprising amount. The Kinect along with the actual console blend in very well and don't appear out of place with other technology. The controller is firm, comfortable, and strong. The controller is great aside from nitpicking without a battery pack. The Kinect is vastly improved in both vocal and gesture recognition. The operating system of the Xbox One has been slightly dumbed down to better accommodate all who want to sit with it. Not to say it's a bad thing. Such changes render the new dashboard quick and easy to navigate while being able to confine all your specific entertainment, even if it's just games. A few features that have been cut out seem to be far beyond necessary and should get updated in. The games run noticeably smoother, quieter, and more efficiently than the predecessor. 
The appearance of such games are improved, but the graphics still remain comparable, and that should change soon. Other entertainment features that are present run as they should with the convenience of the Kinect and the dashboard. Overall, the Xbox One feels like it's from the future, but like from Blade Runner. It looks much older than the things it can perform. Honestly, Microsoft screwed up their marketing with this, but it is still an amazing device despite a few shortcomings. Those shortcomings are not a lot, but the few of them are quite big. The Xbox One is a great game console for the entertainment seekers and the game players alike. Not using an aspect of it or so doesn't take away from it, but using each portion certainly adds to it. This console seems to be made for an extremely wide audience, and if you find just a few features of games to want for it, the hefty price is well worth or a wait will do some good. Now you know what's with the Xbox One. Hey everyone, I want to say thank you for watching this video for however long you did, and if you got to this part, thank you very, very much for clicking in this and viewing this. I know the video was kind of crudely made, more like the, the real life video shots, you know, like $200 camera, which I thought would be good, but I guess it wasn't that good. Uh, again, I'm sorry for being so crude. You know, I really tried to make this as best as I could. So like I said, thank you for watching, and if you want to see more videos that are reviews, not necessarily hardware reviews, please feel free to subscribe. And of course, like and favorite the video if you enjoyed it. Like I said, thank you very much, and I hope I hope I'll gain some new new watchers because of this. So, thanks again, guys. See you later.